Good morning. Looks like most of our manual treatments is focusing on daily. So I'm going to do a switch for you all. Focusing more on the tape. I love the tape. <laughs> I love that case. All right, so I'm Tang Lim, University of Missouri Extension. Uh, Josh Brown is uh, one of the graduate students who just uh, recently taken a job. Joe Zulovich is not here, but I think a lot of you all know him. Um, and then Ray Massey is our economist, a good one. So you see how his work comes into play when we deal with some of those, those numbers. So what we want to talk about is the solid liquid separation finishing model. It's somewhat unique, um, especially in the Midwest. Um, I want to say that when we talk to the farmers, they have a big question about why we're doing this. So I just want to say it up front. This a lot of time depends on the farm situation. It may not fit most of the situations we have, at least in the Midwest system right now, especially when people have very good nutrient management plan, they have enough land. So that's probably not applicable to you all, but there is potential in there. Um, so we, we've been focusing so much on the dairy side, but um, similarly, the, the swine, especially the dip pit system or the lagoon system, are also dealing with a lot of water in the manure. So, and then there is air quality because um, the producers can use, uh, been using much less of the antibiotics. So I think that the air quality uh, requirements in the barn is, is only going to be getting more stringent in terms of the requirements uh, if you want to maintain a good operations. So we, we started looking at this solid liquid separation barn. Um, we were so lucky to happen to have one of the very progressive um, producers in the state of Missouri actually built one of the commercial ones. Uh, so you'll see it. Um, so we want to do uh, a more complete study, meaning that at least a year round, how this barn is performing in terms of the solid liquid separation, what kind of issues they have in the summer versus in the winter. Um, so to start with it, um, as an engineer, we like to show the groundwork. So this is what it looked like. It's very different from the traditional um, pit barn. And you will see that there's a slope. It's, it's basically a shallow pit. So you see that the channels um, for one of these rooms in there, um, and then there is a, a trough, a slope trough that is collecting the liquid manure and urine part by, by gravity. Um, and then you see more of those. And then there's a scraper that will be installed later. So this is what the barn looked like. This is a, a, a thousand head barn. Inside there, because of his unique operation, he's um, custom building this um, into a four small rooms in that same room. So we have about 250 to 280 at, um, finishing picks in there. So, and this is the gears and the cables for the scraper system. So this is what it looked like under um, the uh, more like a shallow pit, sloped V-shaped floor. And then the urine is drained this way, drop down, and then um, and, and then collected in, in a pit collection pit outside the barn next to the barn. And then the scrapers would go um, automatically every 400 pounds of heat that is consumed by the pit. So the idea is that uh, when you eat this much, you need to make sure that it's wet. So that's that's the idea behind it. So it pushes the manure out. So this way, drop into this little conveyor system that was also custom built by the farm. And then this conveyor belt um, gets delivering those into a nearby storage shed. So, are you all with me now? So, urine separation, liquid manure separation by gravity drains out to this little collection pit and then it pumps to an existing and then the solids gets collected by the automatic scraper, gets stored in separate storage shed. So it's actually quite simple. Um, but there are some um, maintenance issues, there are some construction modification that we, we are still trying to work it out. So in order for us to really do our monitoring well, um, trust me, there's no, I think there's no other project that pays so much attention to that. We do actually have to install a camera that shines over this storage pile. So our web students, if you go to the farm, download this, 
that camera and then look at it over so you're very sick of it at the end, but that's the only good way for us to actually trace the amount of the solids that was collected in the pit, uh, in the soil shed like this. And then, um, we were lucky that Hobo, when we started this project, Hobo comes up with a little, um, uh, portable, uh, wireless pressure test that we can use. Basically, it's, it's waterproof. You just drop that thing into the pit, so it monitors the water level. Because so, when back then, in the older days, when we were trying to do these uh, National Air Emission Monitoring Projects, one of the challenges is for us to closely monitor the uh, the uh, dip pit level. There is no good way other than just to fix the dip pit. But now we have laser measure, so it's it's better now. But still, in order for us to do a better job tracing the the amount of water or the the, the liquid manure leaving the mine. It was our way. So, like I say, on a good day, you can see stackable manure. Okay? On a bad day, sometimes there is a mechanical issue. Counterintuitively, he actually, the farmer has, actually has to add some water back to the conveyor system to make the conveyor work. So, there is some technical issues that we would like to improve that system. But on a good day, this is what it looked like. That you can see clearly that the manure is protected. So it's very unique for the pig farmers. Um, so we also tap into some of his information, like what is the life mass, what is the pig consumption, and all that. And then for fun, one of the questions that the farmer asks us is that now that we have this system working somewhat, okay, now that I have separated the solids, what do I still have to do with my liquid? Can I do more? There's no clear answer to it. So part of the project is that can we play with some of the nanofiltration, ultrafiltration, and reverse osmosis in terms of um, not utilizing as much polymer fibers and what is the physical um, um, barriers for doing some of this uh, uh, liquid purification for water uh, recycling. So for air quality, we measure. Um, at the wall fence, and also this is almost like a pit fence because all this, this fence are drawing directly from the fully flooded floor <coughs> in the central aisle. But of course, each of these rooms, you can barely see it here, each of these four rooms has its own wall fence. So it's central. So we, back, we measure the air quality at this one. So this is a little bit add ons, and it's nothing fancy, it's, it's not as. Um, um, 24-7 type of monitoring is just a quick uh, monthly visit to just take a quick indicator um, using various patients in terms of monthly ammonia and like that. That's a quick indicator of what the quality, air quality is like. So again, so this is the uh, the pressure sensor data on a good day. You should see that the water level in that little uh, collection pit outside of the barn. This is what it looked like. You can see that the accumulations from midnight to in the morning, pigs wakes up, start eating, drinking, so it quickly goes up, and then the pump runs like this, so it depleted from the, uh, the urine to the nearby lagoon, and it accumulates again. So on a good day, you can see that. On a bad day, like this, what happens? So it could be rainwater that seeps into the system, or it could be this happens to be one of the rooms. So the data makes some sense to us. So we have to carefully um, exclude some of this data like that because our intention is to know what is the solid liquid separation. So, um, so what we learned throughout that more than a year period is that we're seeing anywhere from 298 to 18, 14 gallons per day, but on average, because this follows. The growth of the system. So on average, we have about 885 gallons of water produced in um, So this is the liquid productions throughout that, that over, a little bit over a year period. And this is the solid part. So again, on a good period of time, you see that solid manure accumulation like this. And then this is when they clean up the uh, solid shed. And something bad happened here. Why is it not happening? Right? So 
old. This is what we call climbing season. This is not, this barn is more like a transition to that farmers. Um, he has like 2,000 acres, 3,000 acres, or something like that. There. He does new construction. Uh, a little bit, uh, mid Missouri type of operations. So I've been conversation with the so at times that the scraper was not working well. So we had to once again improve some of those practices. Okay. So um, on average we have about 300 gallons of the solid manure stuff in the soil. Okay. So some of those live mass, some of those uh, feet things. Um, not going to go into the details. And then the treatments of the the water that we collected or the liquid we liquid manure we collected from the barn. Um, how do we play with it? There is some pH adjustment according to the literature that we should do. So it was not fun to do the to do the uh, uh, membrane filtration because there is some inconsistencies. The unit is very small and then there is some fluctuations in the territory to the liquid within that is collected. So I would say that it's it's basically not not very good set of data for us to be drawing some conclusion on it. So at the end of the day, the liquid manure, solid manure characteristics on average, so these are based on at least 12 monthly samples that we could collect from the, from the barn. Um, in terms of the production, um, over that one year period, at least one year period, 885 gallons of, uh, on average of liquid manure collected from the barn, 299 gallons of the solid collected from the, the, in the storage shed. And what's more importantly is that when we start diving into, into that whole year data, what is the percentage removal um, in terms of the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and all that? So I want to point out that on average, we're seeing because of the solid evaporation, this system was capable of removing about 75% of, or trapping 75% of the phosphorus in the solid. You guys still with me? Okay, so this this is a good news to some of those people who actually need this type. If you're landlocked, if you're you're already seeing a lot of high phosphorus in the nearby ground, this is not the way to consider. Um, our little coin unit of the membrane separations. Um, so you can see this is the raw liquid that we collected from the barn. Um, this is our final product and this gives you a perspective this is the separate because by looking at the color you know we never really achieved that 99 percent those things that they can because while there are multiple factors to it sale the practicality and also um those percentage were mostly based on salt water they reported that this membrane is capable of giving like 96 to 10 pounds of um, Nutrients removal is based on salt water. So we, we have more complicated uh, mixture of chemicals in those. Um, and then the other thing is that we never have the time and energy to go collect a whole bunch of this and then do a second test. So it, I bet that it would significantly improve that. So there are some numbers in the paper. Um, the flow rate is another big thing. As you can see, the microfiltration is much, much more higher for it than as soon as it hits the uh, the uh, reverse of small. Even for tap water, you can see that it's really hindering, uh, a major hindering factor when it comes to the separations. So, um, okay. So, this is the most important information to the farmers. How much does it cost when building a barn like this versus the solution of this big barn? Because this big barn is probably the most popular barns in the middle of the region. So by comparing the numbers, um, cost per fix, a finishing barn, what it drives down to is that our, this unique um, solid liquid separation barn costs about $269 a tap. Okay? And then if you compare it to um, our average dipped barn, depending on uh, what type of specs that you want, um, probably 230 Okay, so there is still a big increase, about $40. So 
but then we dive into, well, what about a payback? What does it take for a farmer to be willing to pay forty dollars more to take farm records? What can we gain out of it? So then that's where gray matching comes into play. We have to start making some assumptions. What is the distance from that barn to your land application site? What type of methods that you're using? Um, because of the time, I don't think we have the luxury of going into the details. Um, so those numbers are in there by assuming um, using different uh, details. So what it really comes down to is trying to make the fair comparisons apple to apple. What it is is that it's going to take 15.1 years more to pay for a farm record. So not very good news, right? But what about air quality improvement? What about the land loss? What about some different scenarios that we may face? You know? So a lot of this comes into play. What if we have a further distance in order to meet the needs of the land? So there's there's a lot of um, farm specific information that I think that we want to do more uh, analysis on the different case scenarios on this to draw a better conclusion. But to, to really stand behind confidently and comfortably behind those numbers, 15 years is what we're looking at. Um, but of course, it depends. So some of those air quality, as you can see, the ammonia emissions, uh, ammonia concentration, it's, it's much, much lower than what we've seen in the traditional liquid model. And then hydrogen sulfide is basically uh, lower than the typical of the uh, Okay, so that's that's really where, where I want to stop at because of the time. I think most people stay on time. Any good questions? Yeah, uh, your comparison for the So again, this this is not this is not for every single farm. Okay. So it depends on what what the farm situation. Um, so, but there is good. Yeah. There are forty dollars difference, but is that uh, per pig space or per pig? Per pig space. Per pig space. Okay. Yeah. We have time for one more question. Yeah, there it is. Um, Can you repeat the question? So, do we compare the excretion rate to the interface we use here? So, if you add the 300 plus 899 uh, to 1,000, then it's about 1,000. Alright, thank you all.